introvert or extrovert? With social media, you can be both. Hello world, it's Siraj, and not many developers realize how important the role of social media is in their careers. In this video, I'll show you how you can use different social media platforms to help you learn cutting edge technologies, network, and promote your own brand. When I was working at Twilio on the developer education team, we had to learn the art of marketing to developers. Developers. developers are a smart bunch. Normal marketing methods don't work on them. They know BS when they see it, like certain ICOs. So it's best to be upfront, honest, and crystal clear about whatever your message to them is. That means you can't just spam them with generic ads. It has to happen organically. Your message has to be targeted. You have to be able to relate to them. And what better way to interact with developers than the social media platforms they live on? So let's start with Twitter. Twitter is my favorite social network. I use it like an RSS feed. I followed all the people I really admire and when I spend my time scrolling on Twitter, unlike every other social network, I'm actually learning and improving myself, whether it's through book recommendations, techno-philosophical tweet storms, bored Jan LeCun, or staying up to date with the latest research from the AI or blockchain industries. I could start listing a bunch of smart people to follow, but instead, I'll just say, go to my Twitter profile and see the couple hundred people I'm following. Follow them one by one. Also, if you go to lists and see the lists I'm a member of that other Twitter users have created, you'll very fast start seeing people who are influential in computer science and you can follow them easily. You want to be ruthlessly precise about who you follow. These are the people you are letting influence you. But Twitter's best use case is networking. I've used Twitter to directly engage with brands and people I care about. I've coordinated collaborations through Twitter's direct messaging feature. Many opportunities have emerged. It's a much more accessible and faster way to interact than email. So if there's someone you want to reach out to, before sending them an email, see if they have an active Twitter profile. Chances are, you'll get a reply much faster. I'm also always promoting my videos on Twitter. I even start generating hype for my videos beforehand, sometimes weeks in advance, which results in more views. You can do the same for any project you are working on, whether it's code or technical content. The Twitter community is technical and collaborative, so if you tweet out quality content, it will be retweeted endlessly. So on to Reddit. I've talked a lot about using the machine learning subreddit as a primary resource of mine to stay up to date with the latest news in artificial intelligence and it still is. However, it's not the only subreddit that's relevant to this field. I've compiled a list of other ones I visit. Everything I talk about in this video will be in the video description. My second favorite is Data is Beautiful. There are some really inspiring visualizations there if you're ever feeling disillusioned with the field. It's not a great platform for networking, but it will definitely keep you updated if you visit often. And don't go on too many subreddit tangents. I've also found out the hard way that Reddit is really strict about posting your content too much without contributing to discussions. So if you have something valuable to share, make sure to balance it by engaging with other posts just as much. Speaking of engagement, Facebook gets a lot of hate these days for profiting off of user data, and it should. But regardless, it's still a great platform to find career opportunities. There are a few Facebook groups I've found that are full of helpful and creative technologists in both AI and blockchain. The great thing about Facebook is that everyone is using their real identity. So if you actively engage with people in a specific Facebook group, you will become known in that group. It's a fast track to close relationships with others in the field. Also, posting code and content in these groups will give you feedback fast and you can post it in a bunch of groups all at once with no limits. Prepare yourself for a notification storm though. But notifications aren't just limited to Facebook, 
What's up, YouTube? YouTube is a great platform for education, although it didn't used to be. So many amazing creators have been sharing high quality, free content on here. When it comes to technical content, there's of course Centdex, whose in-depth Python tutorials are very helpful. 3Blue1Brown, who makes some of the best math animations in the world, Daniel Schiffman, who teaches creative coding via JavaScript, and a young Young Tanmay Bakshi, who is like a younger version of me and will probably take over the world one day. As for non-technical channels, definitely check out Charisma On Command. I want you guys to be confident and good communicators. This dude has all the secrets. If you ever present your project at a conference, you're going to need these skills. And as always, remember to download a Chrome extension to watch these videos at 2x or 3x speed. You will save so much time that you can instead dedicate to other things like spending it on Hacker News, a very technical social network run by the popular startup accelerator Y Combinator. I find that it's a great learning resource, but more so than the links being shared, the comments never fail to educate me. Thanks to the voting system, the best, most thoughtful comments percolate up to the top. And make no mistake, the developers here are viciously skeptical of claims that are not thoroughly backed by evidence. So rest assured, the top comment on any link here is likely high quality. Hacker News has a very sophisticated algorithm to prevent upvote spamming, so don't just share your content link with your friend directly to upvote. If it is quality, it will rise itself. I found LinkedIn to be a great tool to find quality business relationships. I've made a fair number of deals through the direct messaging system, and sharing my content on LinkedIn has proven to get it out in front of some very influential people. Hashtags seem to make a big difference on LinkedIn, so be sure to add those to your posts when you can. Just don't overdo it like this guy. I will say though that I don't find the LinkedIn newsfeed to be particularly interesting, especially since there is an ad every few posts. But LinkedIn ranks very highly on Google search, so make sure to sell yourself well here in your profile. It may be the first thing people see about you when they search your brand on Google. Quora is another social network for professionals. You can learn a lot from Quora, especially if you find similar questions and cross-check the top answers for similarity. That way you can find the answer you're looking for and minimize the bias of the poster. Quora is also great for promotion. If you're answering questions left and right on Quora and your answers are high quality, people will start reaching out to you. Anecdotally, I met a guy at a recent conference in New York City who was invited to speak just because of the quality of his Quora answers. The same goes for Stack Overflow. Developers get poached all the time from this social network for top answers. It shows just how much you know about a particular topic. And perhaps the fastest way to feel a part of a community is to use chat platforms like Slack or Gitter, since the communication is so instant. Slack chat rooms by default are invite only, but you can easily set up a web app that you can send to other people to automatically give them access to your Slack community. Ours is now approaching 20,000 developers, which is pretty insane. And you can find an awesome list of Slack communities for all sorts of technical subcategories on slowfile.com. Lastly, GitHub is indeed a social network and it's best as a learning resource. If you have a question about some concept or theory in computer science, chances are someone has some working, well-documented, readable example code that will give you a better idea of how it works. The key is to be able to search for it the right way. You are ideally looking for code that is 100 lines or less, like this repo that demos a blockchain in just a few lines of Python. Searching for keywords like lines or example and your topic 
will get you some good results. And don't shy away from languages you don't usually code in, except for PHP. If it's well documented, it doesn't matter. Get as good at searching GitHub as you are on Google, and you'll have unlocked an incredible learning resource. Interact with developers on any given project by opening up an issue if you see some part of the code that needs work, and they'll let you know if that's the case. The more pull requests you get merged into a given repository, the more you become a part of that open source project. A lot of times, you have to prove yourself worthy to these core contributors. These social networks offer developers everywhere a massive opportunity to learn, engage, and promote your product or brand to developers. Developers are becoming the new influencers, so we should all get our social media game on point, just like the Instagram stars posting selfies of themselves drinking smoothies do. Spread your brand across multiple social media platforms and link them all together by posting links on one social media platform to all the other ones. Ready to take over the world yet? Because I am. Please subscribe for more programming videos, and for now, I've got to generate some hype. So, thanks for watching.